Um, I saw you on there. Are you on, uh, by phone? Is the street muted? Uh, is she the 603, Steve? Uh, let me look down. No, the street is on and she's not muted. Can you hear us, Estrita? Um, she may have to go back to her phone because it's not allowing her. I see her mic is unmuted. Yeah. Um, and I still come back on on her phone. Yeah, I couldn't pull her up to the screen. In case you're wondering, this is our leadership shirt from this summer. It says MSAD 60 Noble. A Noble Odyssey 2020, and it shows, uh, I'm not kidding you, this was done last summer. This shows um, these fish have electric charges in them because it's saying that our administrative team should reach out to the community remotely. I'm dead serious that was our theme for this year. Well done. <laughs> well, either that or we caused the problem. Somebody had a crystal ball. Wow, just wow, that's kind of weird that we did that. Uh, Do you want me to get us started? Uh, yes, please, Denise. Okay, I don't actually remember how to do that. Um. So we, we're going to dispense with the flag salute for today. Oh, uh, straight so into my part anyway. Uh, and I, I think I'll speak directly to um, how the input session will work today before you say your piece. So okay. Jen, Jen Flewelling is on the, the office phone number. It says, please call 207-676-2234, extension 1. And if the person leaves a message, Jennifer, Jen will be able to uh, play that message at the, at the public input time. The person must include their name and the town that they reside in at the beginning of the message. Uh, we've only got one because of the communication style um, we're, and the fact that we're not required to have two input sessions. We've reduced it to one today. There's a lot of board work to be done on the budget. So, um, Denise, once you're finished with your statement, we'll go to see what – we'll take a few minutes and see if Jen gets any hits on the phone. Okay. So, I'll read the statement as it normally is. Right? Please. Okay. So the first public or the only public input session is a 15 minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. But a second, no, nope, never mind. Um, the speaker will give his or her name, address, and reason for speaking. Public input is designated for district residents. The board chair may grant non residents the opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding executive sessions cannot be made during public input. For example, matters involving personnel. So Jen, do we have any public input? Let me take a look and see if Jen No is public input at this time. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna hold on for like a minute and a half, two minutes. To see if any statements do come in. So the agenda shows that we have a second one. Are we scrapping that one? It does. Yeah, it does. Uh, oh, uh, yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I misspoke. Thank you. Um, I'll do public input from from me. Um, so I just wanted to Who is publicly me? Who is say, talking? oh, it's Jamie. It's Jamie. Stewart. Oh, hi. hi. Um, so I just wanted to say that um, we, I really appreciate the support from the administration and from the families in Lebanon um, going through this process so far. It's been absolutely crazy, but you guys have been really great with communication, um, had a great conversation with Patty today, had a wonderful four hour conversation actually with my team today, um, just kind of preparing and getting everything organized. Um, and it's, you know what, considering the chaos that it could have been, it's been fairly smooth. 
Um, it was wonderful to have tomorrow. I'm actually looking forward to it um, to just kind of decompress a little bit and take a break. But do you want to um, for a second so that uh, board members know what you're saying? Say what? I'm sorry. Do you want to speak to what when you say to have tomorrow? Oh, so tomorrow. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. So tomorrow we kind of we're going to put out a message that everybody's going to take a break. Um, we're going to take a break from being online and from technology and give everybody a chance to kind of recoup a little bit, get our feet back underneath us and breathe. Um, so that was a well, very well, um, very welcomed phone call to get this evening. Um, and the other thing was, hold on. <laughs> um, oh, we did have a question Um about accountability and i know there's a lot of questions out there in regards to how this is all going to work but and i don't expect you to answer this question right now um but my question is what it how are we going to approach the accountability of students being online during this time and checking in and um again don't expect an answer right now but just something that's kind of been floating around in my head about making sure that the kids are getting or having access to everything that they need. So when they come back, whenever that is, they're ready. And that's it. Thank you, Jamie. Is, Jen, did you see any input? Jen Florelic? No, no input at this time. Okay, Estrita, we're ready. Is Estrita on? Yes, I, I think I saw her phone on. Let me just double check. Uh, mm -hmm. No, so Denise. So I'll keep it going, and it's going to continue to be easy because there were no minutes attached. Right. Well, yeah. we'll need a motion to table those, though. Okay, so can I get a motion to table the item number four minutes. I of make that there. motion. This is Nancy. I motion that we table the minutes. This is Becky. 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 Oh, go ahead. Hi, Becky. Travis. <laughs> Who got the second? Uh, Travis. Travis and I duked uh, it out. I'll yeah. second it. Okay. Any opposed? Okay, so that's a that's a seven zero. -oh because we're missing Estrita and Linda, I think? Or is Linda on? Estrita, I keep getting a message from Estrita has left the meeting. Yeah. Yes, I see that, it popped up. It looks like she's trying to get in, but keeps getting kicked out. Yeah. Okay, well, um, can we get a student report? Yeah, I have a little that I can report on. Hi, Sam. Hi, Mr. Connolly. So, this week has been kind of rough for the students, I would say, especially for the senior class, just because of the level of unsure about the rest of the school year. But I do think that a really good thing that has come out of this for kind of the entire student section of this district is we've all been able to check in on each other and make sure that we're all OK, because we all are we all are kind of stressed at this moment. But there has been a great community, kind of as we've seen on the higher community levels of us being able to check in with each other. So that's been a really good thing I've seen this week. Uh, Caitlin, how are you doing? Caitlin McCabe? She might be muted. Turns out I was <laughs> muted. Sorry. I think I was muted. Um, can anyone right. hear me right now? Yes. Okay, perfect. I have a cold right now, but I'm doing okay besides that. And it's not Corona. Okay. But, um, I agree with Sam. There is a lot of uncertainty, but there is also a lot of understanding. We all get that it would be better to be home and maybe just be around like family or going to the store than to be in a school where there's going to be a bunch of people. So like it's stressful right now, but I feel like majority of it is just for the senior class just because we have so many other things going on at this time in our life. But besides that, like everybody gets that it's just safer and we'd all rather stay home for a little bit and still be able to have the ability to learn online because we're already used to Google Classroom, which is fantastic, mm -hmm. um, and be able to learn and then go to school and risk a bunch of people getting sick. 
Yeah, this is, um, this is a tough situation, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Everything's up. Can you imagine being a? Can you imagine being a? Um, a one of our spring athletes, and, and this is your big sport, and you're looking to have scouts at a game for you and things like that. I mean, these things are, or somebody's looking to. Uh, do the compass learning work and and uh, do some uh, some uh, standards recovery and and now we're all at the remote learning phase anyways so yeah it'll be a challenge yeah but i think it's pretty good that we have the classroom right now like we're used to it so i mean and the teachers i know some of my teachers so far have already kept in contact with us through email and said like what they're planning on yeah. doing that we can always stay in contact with them if we need it. Any anything else? Student report? Uh, no, I'm good. I'm good. All, All right. right, Mr. Connolly, can you give us an update on remote learning? I am going to ask the people who are muted right now from administration to unmute their their uh, devices. And um, I'm going to call on a few people to just give us, uh, uh, because we've got a lot going on, but it's going on in a lot of places. <laughs> I'm checking other messages to see if I have any input. Um, so let's see who else is out there. Um, hmm. All right, so let's try. I just came first, Steve. Northborough Common. Start with Mark, Mike A, but you go ahead. <laughs> um, so I, I just wanted to uh, cheerlead the technology department. Um, the amount of the amount of effort and planning and support that they've given the district and specifically teachers and administration at Northborough Elementary School is outstanding. I can't imagine how it could be any better. So. Uh, tip of the hat to technology um and i'd follow that up with the the teaching staff at northborough elementary school and and to be honest around ms8060 is leading leading um the state of maine i don't i don't know if there's a, another district in our state has hit the ground running like we're doing and um just reading comments from kids and, and the communication with teachers and kids through google classroom and CSAW is we've been holding Google Hangout meetings with staff. Um, we have plans to talk to all of our kids who have social emotional needs. And so we have we have documents going that are are tracking our communication with them and how many times we're checking in with them and what what our check-ins are gonna look like. So um, that's North Burke Elementary School. Hey, uh, let's see, uh, Patty Gilly. Sure. Um, I can echo what Mike said. Um, a huge shout out to Tech. I know that the teachers are also leaning on them for support. The webinars are great. I've heard nothing but good feedback. Um, looking over, we have um, at last count, Heather and I, I think believe we're involved with at least 48 Google Classrooms and 20 Seesaw accounts. There, everybody is out there putting it out to students. And, and when we're looking at their comments and what they're doing, um, they, they have set the bar quite high. Um, students are engaged. Um, students being at school, we're hearing that a lot. Um, the Custodians are busy cleaning. I don't think our school has ever been that clean. Um, it's, it's phenomenal. It's so disinfected. Um, and, and now they're taking on other tasks. Um, I was there on Wednesday for the food, um, the first food distribution. And um, it was a well-oiled machine on the first day. Um, it, they were ready to go on time. Um, there were plenty of people helping. And it was a pretty impressive sight. I think that the more we can get the word out to students, the better. Um, I had talked with some parents today and they, they, they weren't aware of it. And so I think as it goes on, more people are going to take advantage of it. Um, that, that kind of sums it up. Things are going um, quite well. Great. Audra, Audra Bove. Hi. How's it going? Wonderful. <laughs> good. good. 
So on Tuesday, um, the elementary schools had packets ready for the students. And at Husby School, we had great uh, parent participation in that. And the teachers did a great job making copies. For some of our younger children, we um, felt starting with some of the packets and then moving gradually into Seesaw and Google Classroom was going to be beneficial. And um, our teachers are all up and using Seesaw and Google Classroom. I want to echo what Mike said about a big shout out to technology because it has just been phenomenal. The support that is out there for our staff is just incredible. And um, just really thumbs up, double thumbs up for that. And um, we had a staff meeting today. We used Zoom and not Google Hangouts, and that went really well. And um, we had some PD time as well, and teams are continuing to meet and talk. And um, some students have been on Seesaw 25 times since Tuesday. So um, it's been very busy, and they're really liking making the connections with the teachers. So it's been, it's gone very well. Super. Thank you. Uh, in just a second, I'm going to ask Abby Pelletier to give us an update. Just so you know, I have Estrita on my phone and she's listening over the uh, computer. So we, we'll figure things out. Uh, Abby, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Super duper. Tell us what's cooking. See? So uh, 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 <laughs> I've heard that joke many times so far. <laughs> Um, so Wednesday was our, yesterday was our first day of meal distribution. Um, we try to get the word out as much as possible, but obviously we want to keep spreading the word. We had about uh, 72 bag lunches go out via transportation, which has been super, that went smoothly. Thank you, Brenda. And then we had about 50 at Noble High School and at Noble Middle School each for pickup and about 25 at in Lebanon for a meal pickup. So we're ready. We have food. Um, obviously, you want to keep spreading the word as much as possible. So Very nice. You folks are knocking it out of the park. And uh, on the other side of that coin, Brenda Cravens, are you there? I am. What's up with you? Well, uh, we've got a few more people added to the list of deliveries uh, for tomorrow. And we're also picking up backpacks from the Mary Hurt Academy backpack program. And we're gonna assist with that as well. Um, so far, so good. <laughs> okay, now we have had a little change in protocol on how we're handling things because of an incident today. So when we do the backpack, when, excuse me, when we do the food drop-offs where uh, parents could opt into the drop-off, we had about 75 people opt in for that. Am I close? Um, I think we have uh, a little over 40, but there are multiple children in some of those households. So you're oh, probably okay. right there. Yeah. Yes. All right. And so what we do is uh, we pull in, we call the call and say there's a drop-off. And uh, at one house, we didn't get a response. So the driver got out of the van, uh, bus driver got out of the van she was using to go around to the back to drop something off. And she was bitten by a dog. Yeah. So oh, if, no. if we don't, Jeez, so no. yes, if we don't hear responses from people, we're not dropping. So it's please respond. And I, and I sent out a message to um, the families that are on the, the roster, just reminding them of that going forward. Because, I mean, we didn't disclose. We just said, you know, moving forward, we're going to make sure someone is present to pick up the bag. Yeah. You know, right. And, and that, cha that changed, our, changed our protocol a little bit. I've instructed the drivers. We're just going to do it a little differently. We're going to have them uh, pull over in a safe place between stops, and we're going to have them load up the seat behind so they can reach the items. Abby is sending out, as she said, she's sending out a message that they need to come to the van to get the meals, and we'll beep the horn or use the phone to reach out to those folks. Um, driver is okay. She's just on antibiotics at this time. It was one of those things we couldn't have anticipated, you know. Right, right. Um, thank you very much for your, your team's effort. Uh, Mr. Let's see, I'm going to go first to Jen Flewelling because she and Eva and Eva Hamill, Dave Hamill, 
Rebecca Manning, Jake Hamill, and Jen get the backpacks today. You want to talk a little about that? So we put together 125 bags to be handed out tomorrow. They, yeah. they had um, crackers and oatmeal, fruit bars, soup, pasta, um, peanut butter in each bag. So Any toilet paper? <laughs> <laughs> no, just, just checking. Just checking. No, no paper products, unfortunately. So, so um, we definitely um, put a dent in the supply that Herd had oh. over there. Um, so we'll definitely have to, or they'll have to be doing some restocking this week. And next Thursday, we're going to meet again to make more bags to send home. Thank you. And uh, we appreciate the volunteerism and we're seeing a lot of that around the community. Andrew Elwell, you want to follow up on that? Yeah, absolutely. You kind of beat me to the punch there. Um, I just want to thank, um, you know, Jen, Rebecca and, and Michelle and, and all the Hamels for uh, stepping up today and build, uh, making all those bags. It's a lot of hard work. Um, huge shout out to Abby, Brenda, just countless hours this week just to make this thing go. Um, you know, truly, truly grateful um, to the to the community effort as a whole to make sure these kids have uh, bags of food to go home this weekend. So huge effort. Thank you to everybody. And MHA, we're happy to say we're ready to launch on Monday as well. It's been uh, quite a chore getting everybody set up in their Google Classroom, but we're ready to rock. So we're ready to set the standards. So. Nice, nice. And uh, speaking of technology, the whole thing is some guy named Chris Russo. Chris, unmute there and have a say. Hey, I'd love to have you. I caught your PD session the other day on Google Hangouts, how to set those up. And Jen Fluelling is particularly ticked that I caught that one because she said I'm doing away with her job. But uh -huh. you uh, share some of the, the sessions that have been going on. Yeah, so we've jumped on board and started um, rolling out kind of the things that are most in demand. Um, and with a 1.30 webinar each day with a topic. So they last about an hour. We're recording them. We're posting them to our website. Uh, today we had about 90 people in a session about screen recording and how to make a video and record it on your computer and post that to your Google Classroom or Seesaw. Yesterday we did uh, two sessions simultaneous, one for Seesaw, one for Google Classroom. Um, we had like 150 people in that one. And then uh, Wednesday we did, or Tuesday, we lose track when you're stuck home. Uh, Tuesday we did uh, a session on Google Hangouts. And we're going to continue that all the way through the, through the duration here, with reinforcing the tools people need um, for technology. And then uh, the other thing that we've been sorting through is how to um, support all the devices that normally, you know, if a kid has a problem, they come to the library the next day and we take care of the problem, but they're not coming to the library. So we're figuring out how to deliver uh, new devices or replacement devices and pick up their broken devices. Um, so we, we've we been starting that process and we delivered uh, 40 internet hotspots over the last couple of days to homes that didn't have internet. And then we're also working with um, a couple of different companies trying to collate the information about how other families can take advantage of Comcast offers and Spectrum's offers. Uh, Atlantic Broadband has not made any kind of offer yet. So we're, we're kind of trying to leverage them any way we can to say, hey, <laughs> jump in the game and give us something here. Um, so that's, I think, where we're at. And I got I to say to the teachers, um, you know, to completely retool what they do every day for a teaching career over a period of like 72 hours and be ready to go is just amazing to me. I mean, the questions we've been getting are amazing. The teachers have been like all over this. Um, and it's just, it's, if there's a silver here uh, in this whole thing, we will never have another snow day. <laughs> that's that's one of the things, I'm glad you just said that. Cause I'm gonna talk to, to the state about that saying, even the five days that, uh, to get to 175, 
you know, you require, you can't, like a blizzard bag is over the five days. My question to them now would be, why? Hmm. Why are they over five days? It should be ready to go any day. Um, but in any case, Chris, thank you and your team for your efforts. I'm going to take two more stops here. Uh, Michelle Keniston, why don't you give us an update? And Joe Finley, I see your mic is muted, but after Michelle finishes, would you uh, jump in and share about the high school, please? Joe, Joe or Allie. Thank you. Michelle? So we had um, some great PLC meetings today. We had fourth and fifth grade PLC, and then we had a staff meeting. Um, the thing that the, the teachers are doing an amazing job. Our teachers had all of the kiddos on their Google classrooms the Friday we sent them home with it devices. So those teachers were up and rolling and getting the kids ready for this eventuality on the Friday. So Monday, all of those Google classrooms had something in it, whether it was just some reading assignments or a quick check-in, they were all ready to roll on Monday, which is amazing. Um, the teachers are really excited that their parent interaction has gone through the roof, that the parents are contacting the teachers. It's been overwhelmingly positive. Um, and they're also really excited about the level, the level of collaboration that they've got right now because they are just all in it right together. Thank you, Michelle. High school. Well, at the high school, this has been uh, the longest week of my career. <laughs> uh, the time has been going very slowly, but we've gotten a lot of things done. Um, we've had, uh, had all of our kids take home their laptops and anything else they needed on Friday. And any students who forgot things were uh, let back into the building on a schedule and Allison Kearney and Tyler Windsor were at the door letting them in. And that went very smoothly. We sent out schedules to all the kids as to when they will receive uh, assignments and when they'll receive instruction and when they should be doing their work. Um, we had uh, about 25 kids, I think, that did not have access to laptops because they uh, had to check, check them in and check them out. Uh, every day for a variety of reasons and Mr. Russo released all those laptops to our kids and also established internet connections at their homes. Hmm. The teachers uh, spent most of this week learning how to do remote learning and uh, the tech department's done a great job with that so we're going to be ready to go on Monday with uh, direct instruction. Al, you want to add anything to that? Um. No, that, that was a pretty good summary of what we've been working on. You know, I, I'm, I'm pretty confident with our teachers' abilities to um, conduct remote learning. You know, as, as the kids have mentioned, we have been using classroom exclusively um, for a handful of years. And I, those um, few standalone folks who maybe weren't doing so certainly are now. Um, you know, I, again, I, this has been said, but I really want to thank Chris um, and all of the tech department. They've been very responsive to um, what I know has been a very, very high volume um, of requests, and they've done a really good job with that. And one of the things that this week um, with our staff that we've really been pushing is that they be mindful um, in terms of taking care of themselves um, and setting limits and boundaries to the amount of time that they are spending um, food to their computers um, and that they extend that level of care and compassion um, to kids and families as well, knowing that ultimately right now um, within our community, we've got folks who are worried about food security or job security um, and kids and teachers and our community's health and well-being um, both in terms of physical and mental health is also um, those things that are really important. And for right now, um, those are of the utmost importance. And we will tackle the learning part. Um, we're confident uh, that we will get that. Um, but those other parts, we're, we're trying to just, you know, remind everybody are ultimately what really matters um, throughout the duration of this. So. All right. So I think, uh, you know, everybody's got a lot they could chip in on that, but I think that that gives a pretty good idea about where things are. We did say to people, we've got to take it. We're, we're a little overwhelming people right now. Um, so we've got to uh, students and staff alike. So we're going to take a breather tomorrow, as Jamie mentioned. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun reading every day to uh, students. 
I was shocked that the uh, wonky donkey had over 2,600 hits on it. I, I thought, geez, my grandson's had nothing else to do all day but watch that over and over again. Um, so uh, tomorrow will be a new adventure. Yes. Would you mind asking Susan Macri for a special ed update? Oh, that's a very important one. No, but you just did. <laughs> Susan, can you uh, jump in? There you go. Yeah. Um, we are up and running as well. We've held probably 40 IEP meetings in the last three days. Parents have done a really great job of connecting. Um, our staff is connecting well also. Um, in terms of services, it's a whole new world for us. But the message that I want to get out to parents, and I will through a letter, is that as always, we care about our kids and we want to make sure um, that they don't regress and make progress. And if we can't do that through um, teleconferencing and distance learning, we will make sure that through services, whether it be during the summer or additional services next year, that our students make the progress that we want them to make. Thank you very much, Susan. And I uh, forgot uh, to say, hey, Mike Roberts, what's going on? Oh, uh, yeah, I didn't know if you want me to speak or not. Oh, what we've been hearing, it's been it's been great. Um, and the tech help, I want to add that the attitude has been tremendous. I can't imagine all the all the calls, but not only has tech been incredibly helpful, but every one of them, the attitude has been top notch. And I'm glad Susan got a chance to speak because uh, the student needs, um, whether it be the food that we're delivering or the virtual IEPs or all the teachers reaching out, just to send a positive peace of mind message has been tremendous. And I think Michelle Keniston said it best in terms of uh, just the, the communication that is out there to the district. I, I can't imagine another district in better shape than we are. I really cannot. But um, just echoing everything I've heard. And Thanks to a lot of people, we're ready to go Monday morning, and I think it's actually been ready for a couple of days now. Things are good. All right, super. Thank you. So I think we have kind of the gist of the district, uh, Astrida. I think I see you on now. I think I see her on, but I think uh, there. The, here we are. Is that better, Astrida? You can't hear me, can you? Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Okay. I tried a different browser. Okay. So we're at uh, number seven. Yeah. So financial summary. Let's hear it. <laughs> All right. So you got a copy of that. That is the February of 2020 fin uh, financial summary. I'd like to see if there are any questions about that at this point. We're, we're not sure what the total, just so you know up front, we're not sure what the total impact of this will be to our continuing financial summaries. There's a lot of things that'll play into this. Uh, are we more than 30 days? Uh, is it going to cap at 30 days? And how do things kick in at that point? So um, can't answer that yet. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? <clears throat> Think we're good? Okay, let's move on to number eight, the current budget draft update. All right, would you pull up the document that's called 03-19-20 budget update in the Google Sheets that Denise has shared with you? I don't know how to do this, Kath. You can open a second window. I'm trying. Uh, you have to start. Go to your email. Click on the tab uh, on the on the email from Denise, and it will open up in a new tab uh, when you click the document. <laughs> Did you just ask your daughter for help? <laughs> Right, so I'm just gonna talk in general terms if people can see this, great. If they can't see it, it's okay. It says that the uh, in, in the budget binder that you had from um, February 14th, it was uh, represented a 43,313,831 um, budget for 2021. 
which the expense increase to taxpayers on our just the expenditure side was 2.65. And when you take all other factors into consideration, the overall increase for that to taxpayers on budget one would have been draft one would have been a 6.56. So we realize the uh, untenability of a number like that. Um, so on line four, you'll see draft two reductions from Steve's presentation on March 5th, 2020. There is a total of uh, 100, almost $197,000 in items that we took out of our draft one. And then below that, that's things like, so for people who can't see it, that's things like sub calling system from frontline to time clock plus, reduce field trip transportation, reduce purchase of a bus, purchase um, of bus repairs, reduce that total amount. Mary Heard Academy supplies, Mary Heard Academy contracted services, medical premiums dropping from 5% to 3%. That is a really tough one right there. Um, we won't know for another couple of weeks. And then two retirements that we had notification on the anticipated changeover in there that we could see. So that's about $197,000 altogether. Then um, additionally, these are things that are additional as of today to the draft two that require us to make adjustments. We began the budget process back in December and there are things that occur from now to from then to now that we have to figure back in. Some help us, some don't help us. Uh, there's an employment cost piece right there that you see that says $256,000. There's uh, a medical yep. dental reflecting a staff enrollment change. It's only 1,700, but we'll take it. That helps. Title V has been reinstated, the school health coordinator at the federal level for 24,000. School revolving renovation fund loan payments don't need to start until a year from the expected completion date. So that's 73,500 we would not put into next year's budget to begin those payments. Uh, Tenure payments, so total of 730, I thought it was 730, maybe 735,000 total dollars out of the 1.8 million for the SRF the state would be picking up the rest. Reduce one teaching position, 65,000. Cut the doc star and public relations position and replace it with just the PR part only. That's $30,000 in savings. Superintendent PD funds, just a small amount. Uh, I don't have much to work with in that. And use additional fund balance. Again, here we go. We've got 300 thousand already in fund balance that we're using and that's not for one time only things so that means we're creating a hole but we're at that point each year and then the second thing that we're doing here is increasing that from three hundred thousand dollar hole to a 350 so those are tough moves to make um, the total changeover in all of that is ten thousand almost eight hundred dollars that's an increase so the 2021 budget after those adjustments is $43,127,858, which is a 2.21% increase in the expenditures and the overall impact to taxpayers would be a 5.63%. Um, as you recall, we're, le we're uh, receiving 600,000, approximately 600,000 less in state subsidy. Um, we have uh, the decision sheet items that we shared as a proposal to the board. We have those listed here. Um, there is a total of 245000 in those lines. Now, let's say, for instance, that the board said, we get it. We already met with you on March 5th. You had you defended each one of those things that you really, even down to $2,500 in instructional supply line reductions and you really don't want to have to make those moves and you've been clear that these things will have a negative impact on the district, on our operations next year. 
but if you decided we've got to do those steps, then the 2021 budget, including the decision sheet, would be $42,882,433, for which equals a 1.63% increase to the expenditures. That doesn't even cover, I mean, a 1.63 increase to expenditures does not even cover all our contract negotiations that we have in place with the four groups. So, see, we're we're losing at this point, uh, but the total impact to taxpayers would be a 4.41 percent increase. So, what we thought we would do is, um, at this point, if you look at the agenda, if you have that tab, if not, that's okay. Um, in Steve, the agenda, Steve, yes. can you have folks mute themselves um, while you're going through this? Ah. we got some background noise. Oh, okay. Yes, please. Please make sure you mute yourself, mute your call. Okay. So at this point, we have um, listed in number eight, the superintendent update, and then moving to a board workshop for the board to discuss. Remembering that by April 9th, you have to have a board adopted budget. So um, at this point, is it, uh, Estrita, is it okay with you to move to the workshop open format discussion with the board members? It is, yes. Do we need a vote on that? No, we don't. Okay, then let us do so. All right, thank you. I'm turning this over to you folks and uh, I'm just gonna sit back for a little bit and listen. So, um, I, that's a lot of money to ask from the towns, but I just cannot stomach the idea of, these aren't cuts to the bone, they're cuts into the marrow. Um, we're trying to keep our kids safe. We're trying to give them an environment where they can actually learn. And if we make these cuts, I think we're going to have a problem doing that. What are your thoughts? Time to unmute and talk. <laughs> I agree with you, Estrita. This is Becky. Um, I think that these are some pretty painful cuts and we're going pretty deep with this. And, you know, I'm concerned about the increase also. But I don't know what we can do. Are we yeah. talking about the draft two adjustments or the decision yeah. sheet items? The decision sheet items. Okay. Oh, okay. Because I mean, the draft two adjustments aren't that great either, but. Uh, I mean, I don't want to lose any teaching positions, but, and I know that the whole Doc star issue is gonna, cost us down the road but right now you know i'd rather make sure the kids have what they need is the doc star position that um position at central office with the new accounting program yeah, yeah. okay can can maybe patty explain i know she did and i didn't get it last time but the 0.5 guidance position can, can Patty explain that? Because I know somebody wanted to go part time, and but I'm not sure. But it, yep. Yeah. Sure. I don't mind. So right now we have Julie Smith and Kristen Bennett, who are both full time. And Kristen does half our special ed social work and half school counseling. She would like to go half time, and so if she does that. Um, that would leave that half-time social work position open, let's say. And so we would like to have another half-time position so we could make that a full position. So then we would end up having two and a half people in that role. Okay, thank you. That's what I wondered. Yeah. Anyone else? Comments? Denise Van Campen, I just wanted to say briefly, the the last item on that decision sheet, the 25,000, I'm wondering if I can 
uh, either move that up to something we're going to cut, like up into another section, or just um, agree to cut that. That was originally the benefits associated with that Docstar PR position. Uh -huh. And where we are going to just adding some hours for PR, that really is a cut that's not going to impact anything. Okay. So I, I that 25000 I think, is something that can be cut um, pretty easily. All right. I'm good with that. How are the rest of you thinking about that? Does that, does that suit you? Um, yes. Esther, just a quick, yes. quick uh, tech piece. Can you pivot your camera up just a little bit? Like that? Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Um, so if we cut the, yeah, okay, I see it there. So is that already up on the additional draft two adjustments with a cut docs our PR position and replace it no. with PR mm -hmm. only with a 30,000 cut? So no, the 25,000 was just the benefits because we were going to change a hire an employee to pay out some extra hours for staff to do it who are currently employed. Mm -hmm. So the 30,000 cut the dock star portion of that position and just leave some hours for PR. Okay. And so if we get rid of that 25,000, it's on top Correct. of 30,000 and to get rid of it all together. It gets rid of all the dock star and it leaves $20,000 for PR hours. Denise, um, is, is April 1st still the date that we expect to hear what the health insurance increase or decrease is going to be? As far as I know, that is their annual deadline. Although I will say I have not heard yet from them about the different tiers. Usually sometime in March we hear about them meeting and, and deciding what the tier of, of increase will be. So I haven't heard that yet and I haven't heard a change to the due date. So. <laughs> That's what we're thinking. Thank you. I have a question. Um, it's not specific to this decision sheet, but if if what's going on right now, um, like adds to our expenses, or I don't know, by some miracle, removes from our expenses. I know we can't carry money over from one year to the next, but like, are there any special I'm just wondering if what's going on in all districts right now is going to have any financial impact on our next budget. I guess that's sort of the easier way to ask it. That's a large question. It's the mm -hmm. one of the elephants in the room. We're thinking some things that we're not going to be expending. For instance, we're not going to be expending um, gas. <laughs> some time hours. We've uh, reduced our buildings to to summer run. Um, we ha are saving on gas mileage, but there are some other pieces that we're incurring costs on that in order to operate. So it'll balance out basically, you're saying? We're, we're kind of following that right now. We're not exactly sure which way that's going to go. Okay. If... to, I don't know, somehow utilize that? But we, we don't know yet what those are gonna be. Yeah, we can't count on it at this time, one way or the other. Right. Does and it go on in 30 days? Does it go on for a second? Does it go on for a second state uh, of emergency? That's <clears throat> That's another 30 days. Those were all crucial factors to this. So with the current legislation, and I know they've made some changes, did we see any other than Title V, any other increases of revenue, I guess would be a way to put it? Um, I have not. One of the things I'll share is that what we've seen that, that really bothersome to me is that um, if you're a 50% receiver in this, the food system goes to the summer 
programming model. So it's your summer feed. And if you, if 50% of the students are free and reduced lunch, you, right, you get um, reimbursement for those meals. Our district's at about 30%. So since we are, and we're saying we're feeding anyone under 18 who needs a meal. Uh, because we can't make it personally identifiable. You can't say the only houses we're going to drop off at or the only people we're going to pick up at school must be under free and reduced lunch. <coughs> so the only way to make it happen was to offer to everyone so that we're not personally identifying anyone. Yeah. And um, so by doing that, the meals that we are paying out, or that, that we're serving, are not covered. Um, it makes no sense to me that a meal during the school year under this kind of situation is not covered like if the student was in school. It puts districts in the situation to say, are we going to incur major costs, which is, of course, in a whole separate budget line, uh, uh, a, a whole separate article, or are we going to do the right thing? We should not be put in those kinds of situations. Just one example. All right, can I hear from some other towns uh, thoughts on this budget line? I mean, I know that it's a lot that we would be asking at a time when people are potentially going to have even less. I mean, I'm hearing friends left and right getting laid off. Um, I know that there's some legislation that can help, but still we're potentially looking at a time when people don't have as much and to have the ask of more. I don't see a clear way through this. And we're only at the beginning. Yeah, I mean, I'll just I'll just say, you know, we have to keep in the back of our mind that we have we have another vote in September um, for all the construction. And I, I just can't see saying, OK, if over a 5% increase, mm. and then you've got to vote for this million dollar, many million dollar bond. I, I, I just don't, I, I don't see Lebanon being able to afford all that personally. I don't know what Joanne thinks, but. Oh, I, I agree with you, Nancy. I, I, I just, if we can't, we don't have a crystal ball and see what's gonna happen in the next month. I mean, there could be a lot more people out of work. It's just, oh, I, don't, I just don't know. Can we, take this decision sheet and go down one item at a time and see if there's things that people want to get rid of or keep. I mean, that makes sense. All right. Uh, the first one, the SUV, I believe that's for um, multiple pathways, right? It's for several things. We have uh, at Mary Heard Academy, for instance, we have um, people from that school driving daily in their personal vehicles. Right. And then also multiple pathways when is going from 35 students up to over the course of the next year, close to 100. So we're we're not meeting our uh, agreement with either one of those schools to be able to do what we said that they could do. And we, we had originally looked for four vehicles and we cut it down to one and that we cut it to zero. Thoughts, nope. guys? I think that is a thing we have to have. I mean, we're not, these programs can't function. We're, we're asking for a larger problem with teachers driving in their own cars. I, I agree with you, Estrita. That, that one really bothers me that we can't continue that practice. I have to agree. That one has to be a keep because we can't, we haven't, uh, we have to minimize as much as we possibly can. I agree. Yeah, I, I agree. agree also. Okay. Any, any people saying to cut? Anyone? No. Okay. The guidance position. Um, this is another one that I just do not see how we can cut because as I understand it, without it, we are removing a lot of potential for the kids who need the help with the whole social emotional aspect um, to, to have a consistent support in the schools as they pass through the, through the grades. And the one person who's there now, it's not enough. So I 
kind of missed this discussion when Patty was talking because I had a distraction, but the, there's a teacher that wants to go down to half time. Mm -hmm. Is that the half that we're eliminating, allowing that teacher to go down to half time and we're good? Or are we, I, I kind of missed the confusion on that one. I'm a little confused on that one again. Think we are asking for an additional half a guidance position. So we would take the teacher or the person who wanted to go half time, allow her to do that. And instead of trying to fill a half guidance position, we'd fill it with a whole guidance position. Is there anybody already on staff who's at half time who would be a good fit for filling that as a half position? Rather than as a whole? Yeah. We don't currently have anybody that we could uh, pick up to do that. Um, the, the, sec the, the secondary level is not a good match because they're on a, they're on a rotating schedule. So they talk for people to plug in. And then at the elementary level, we don't, we, at the K to, well, actually, K, I don't think we have another half anyways, even if we could match up the schedule. And we don't think that we would find somebody who get that do a half position. Well, apparently it's very difficult. Um, so sometimes we find difficulty. Um, we find difficulty finding half positions in any of the three towns, but we have had more difficulty when it comes to a person asking to reduce to to half time, and we've got to fill even a regular teaching role in the Lebanon schools because they're a little further west and it, it typically means more driving for somebody in, in most of the cases. So we're not, we, we have difficulty with that. So this is probably gonna be an unpopular thing to say, and I'm sorry to say it publicly, but I feel like if w what we're doing is adding a half a position, um, to satisfy somebody's request to go down to half time, where which is I'm, I'm all for doing that, but it doesn't sound like it doesn't sound like the the like it doesn't sound like the push is that we need two and a half versus two. two like I, I don't sound like you're at your the, the, the workload is, is ridiculously high apparently. I'm sorry, you, you should speak to this. You have the actual okay. facts. What you're saying is that you do actually need another position and it's not really about the person going to half time. Correct. What we really wanted to do is we need an, we need more support and because okay. of the, the number we have, have plus we have this self contained behavior program in our school. So we really I Really, wish we could have had full time. And knowing that that one, this one person wanted to go half, we figured, well, okay, at least yep. she, she would fill that half time, and then we could just add a okay. half person. Okay. There, was, there is a need it for a need a first. person. There is a need for a whole other person. We're yes. just yeah. This is just one way to get to it. Okay. This is an opportunity. Once again, I, I think this is you know. How can we expect the kids to succeed if they don't have the support that they need through the guidance department? Exactly. And this is a huge, I mean, it, it, some of these kids are coming in with such issues that they need that extra support. So I, I, I think this also needs to stay in, in the budget. Here I go. You don't know, cut everything, but here I go. Well, that's the thing. Like I said, yeah. we're cutting the marrow. I know. So I agree. I agree as well. I mean, we sat through that meeting with administration not too long ago and went through all their needs of social workers, yeah. and guidance counselors, and I, I, that's a hard, I, I'm totally against that. I will not, that cut should not be made. I, yeah, I agree. These kids have so much trauma going on. I probably could use another full-time one yep. as well. I, I agree um, with Nancy and Joanne. Excellent. Because <laughs> I agree with you guys too. Um, I agree, but I think as we go down this list, we need to keep in mind that we talk about cutting these things, but we're really just postponing them for a year. So well, look at it like that. I, in this one, I agree we should keep, but yeah. some of these other things, we're just postponing them a year. They're not, if we cut it this year, it doesn't mean they're not ever going to get it. Yeah. Well, it happens every year though. Every year I've been on this board, <laughs> this is what we do. We say that's, it's too much. It's too much. 
I, I don't know how we get to the place where we don't have to do these to these programs anymore. Well, I don't think it's this year because of the bond issue. Hopefully, maybe in a couple of years, yes. Yes, Nancy, I agree with what you're saying. When you're when a budget is a when you have a forty million dollar cost center, and just your fixed costs move you toward a three percent increase of your overall fixed costs. It's not much left. The, yeah, there's yep. it, what what it means is we're doing attrition on the other side of that to balance off fixed costs and try not to put things over a, uh, a number that's, that the community is going to stand up and reject. All right, let's move on. I think we're, am I correct that we're in agreement that the uh, guidance position should stay? Is anyone opposed? No, okay. The Fantas and Pinnell reading kit. Uh, can someone refresh our memories on that one? Yeah, Michelle Keniston had talked about that. That's the $6,500 kit, which people might say, what? That's like 2,000 titles. They come in clusters. They're level A books, level B, right. you know, whatever levels you need. But hers are for the uh, the four or five level, not the youngest level. And so it's um, it's not, it's materials that specifically go with the Fontes and Pinnell work that we're doing around benchmarking. And and she, I don't think she has a kit in her school, if I'm correct. Uh, Steve, I have a one kit in my school, but I don't have oh. enough to go the all the way down to where yeah. I need them to go. Yeah. So she has she has the upper level. She's got two grades, four and five. She's got the upper end of that, but she doesn't have the broader end. So right. all of my behind grade level readers right now, I don't have that resource for. Well, that's a problem that will only get worse if we don't address it, right? M Michelle, can you share with me what you shared? Can you share with everybody what you shared with me the other day? Do you have that stuff? Um, I don't know that I have the exact numbers off my head, Travis, but um, I talked to Travis the other day about the fact that I have had since the end of school last year, to the to right now something like uh what was it travis 20 something kids that had moved in and then another 19 that had moved out so we we've turned over like 40 kids in a school of 215. so these aren't um you know at knowlton we're not looking at children who have come through huzzy and all the way through knowlton every year we have this huge portion of students that change over and they come where they come um so we are still having behind grade level readers i know th these are not i mean okay um I'll save you having, having it again, Estrita, but I think we should, I think this is not an option. Like, I think we can't get rid of that. I, I agree. That, I, well, all right. I agree. If a child can't read at grade level, they're only going to get further behind. So right, I it's only going to be more. Well, so and it also supports, uh, you know, materials that we already have in place. It's not like a new program. Right. Exactly. Right. Okay. I agree. Okay, the insurance deductible. That's an easy one. What exactly does that mean again? In other words, what are we giving up if we say no? Um, Denise, remind me on that one. <clears throat> oh, oh, I know what that is. That is the, yeah. We have insurance deductibles through the uh, for Kevin. Yeah. Um, oh, right. Moore's line on facilities and maintenance. And so if we have a, an event, like let's say we had a windstorm one time that blew off part of the high school roof, we had an insurance deductible that allowed us to, we, we had 5,000 in insurance deductible that allowed us to pay our portion and then the rest was picked up through insurance. So, what so that's a risk management is, question. Let's pull away one of our insurance deductibles. Yeah. Which which is taking a risk. I mean, we're, we're saying nothing bad will happen and crossing our fingers. That's <laughs> <It's> insurance. <laughs> yep. 
I think it's relatively low risk for what it is, you know. Um, and yeah, we haven't we used a one in a number in a couple of years. Um, don't hurt us. <laughs> I know. Goodness, what did I just say? I threw it out there. Yeah. So Kevin and Denise, when we talked about that, we said, okay, we could take a shot at that one. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. I think, think that's one that we can take a shot at, and I mean, yes, it's only five thousand dollars, but. Hey, it's five thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay. Now we have all of the invitation yeah. supplies. So Does everybody agree that that one? I think yeah. Can, yeah. What I'm hearing from you is that from you all is that it would be all right to, to risk that one. Yeah. Um, am I wrong on that? Yes, we're we're good with that from our from the central office level. <clears throat> But we would still have insurance. Yeah, correct. We, yeah. we would still we have, just have to pay the deductible. We can still afford a couple of deductibles before we have to uh, find money from somewhere else. Okay. okay. So yeah, I so, think I think that can go on the chopping block. The next cluster um, of instructional supply budgets. Those are ones that uh, in our internal discussion. There's one that says. Well, there's two thousand dollars for each of the elementary schools. There's twenty five hundred for the high school and I thought middle school is twenty five hundred and high school is two. Sorry, okay. I cut those off. Excuse me. Okay, so yeah. um, the one that people felt was uh, the hardest one to take was another two thousand dollars for a hit from North Berwick Elementary School. So it's one of those 2000s. The other ones people said, we wouldn't be happy to lose it, but if we lost it, it would be better than losing some other things. So the group's thinking was, to, to us at central office was, we don't wanna lose any of it, but please don't take uh, North Berwick's this, this time around. <clears throat> Is it possible to just take a thousand instead of two thousand? Anything is possible. It's possible to do anything. I agree, though. I don't think we should be. If, if I recall looking at North Berwick's, so their supply budget was already really small. And yeah, it's only twenty about twenty one thousand dollars. Whereas yeah. the high schools is over a hundred thousand, but they're only being asked to cut two thousand. So that doesn't seem fair. Yeah, but you have a totally different population size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a 276 students compared to 1,100, and it's it's it doesn't have the same number of complexities. So dollar to dollar, it, it doesn't look like a fairness, but we do look at both fairness and equity as we're making these decisions. So maybe it won't make a huge difference, but maybe we can reduce everything to 1,000 except for the high school and leave it at two. Except for the... Uh, North Park Elementary. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I would, I, I could go for that. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. Okay, so, so, so we're going to do a thousand. Milton one thousand, Lebanon one thousand, North Berwick zero. Uh, yeah. The middle school was one thousand. Uh, fifteen hundred. Fifty. Oh, taking our okay, taking a grand off and leave the high school at two thousand. No. Is that what I was hearing, or, or I'm trying? Yeah, to that's what I meant, but I don't know if, if people are good with that. I am. Okay. What does that do to those schools who have lost the thousand? Well, what kind it, of supplies are we talking? So we're past we're past all the math supplies. We're past all the uh, the science supplies. We we need a few uh, consumable science supplies to keep up with our fossil programming. Um, we did do the purchase a year ago for the um, illustrative math for the middle school and uh, uh, Eureka math for the elementary grades. So right now what that means is they just have to look across like like Michelle's got, uh, Michelle, what do you have? 11 classrooms, I think, something like that. And so she's got to look across her 11 classrooms and say, I'm going to pull a thousand dollars from different pockets of it people mm -hmm. making requests and it you know they don't 
80 81 ish percent of our budget is the is the human cost uh salaries wages benefits so there really isn't that much to the supply side of it and each year we keep getting a little bit tighter and tighter on it but if if you're looking at things to cut we'd really rather look at that side of it if we had to so okay we can we well, can make we'll make anything you say work but we can make this work my only concern with cutting that stuff are, is are we putting the burden on the teachers to pick up yeah the extra supplies i don't know any we all know that they do, do that already anyways <laughs> i'll say we all know they do it and then we yeah. add more to it that's a good very good point let's see we gain one two three Six thousand oh, dollars. Why don't we move on and maybe come back to that one? What about the athletic tournament fees? What are we? What on? is the nature? The what? The nature of the athletic tournament fees. What does that uh, cut achieve? Um. So that was Aaron Watson talking about that. There's a few less. I think he's here. And I think we were talking about booster clubs picking up yes. some of those. Uh, that is correct. Aaron's here if he wants to share. That's what we've done in years past uh, in terms of the uh, high school boosters programs picking up the costs of the, um, of the middle school uh, above and beyond tournaments. Uh, the $1,000 was an opportunity to provide our middle school programs to have some contests that were above and beyond the SMMSAC responsible um, league games, a uh, chance to play Dover, chance to play Newmarket, chance to play Summersworth, um, additional tournament fees. Um, that was something that, um, that we've done in part from time to time, from season to season. Um, the idea of putting the $1,000 in there would be to provide those opportunities on a consistent basis. Um, that is something that uh, I am more than comfortable saying that we don't necessarily have to have that in there. Um, we can find those opportunities from time to time, from season to season. Um, so, okay. so that $1,000 was simply an opportunity to, uh, to play some, some uh, you know, for example, the uh, basketball program likes to play in the Charlie Brown tournament, which is in Saco. Uh, it's a pretty prestigious tournament uh, of which our seventh grade program actually played in and won this year. Uh, for, uh, on the uh, on the boys side so um, th that one thousand dollars can um, can easily go away from the athletic budget um, it just takes a little bit more time and effort to find some some extra special opportunities for uh, some of those other programs uh, to participate in okay thank you mm -hmm. what are your thoughts people um you are you good with cutting that one this time i think we i can i think we can cut it agreed i agree Agree. Okay. All right. Oh, oh, the garage. Oh, geez. So, so Steve, the garage is actually a savings in the end because it's cheaper than installing the the uh, blower system for the wood shop. Yeah, they they don't have storage for they don't have storage for some things in the school that you can't really store inside the school anyways and that, like the uh the trailer with uh six kayaks six 16 foot kayaks on it mm -hmm. and they don't have the opportunity to do the the woodworking elo with uh, extended learning opportunity with simple hand tools because we don't have a a blower system in the school that can do the air filtration like you would in a in a wood shop but this is outside the school and door, the uh, garage doors could be open and so forth, so. Because that's a huge chunk, isn't it? Yeah. But it's also a facility that would have multiple utilities. It would be storage and the wood shop for the students. And from what I remember you saying, that was a very popular program with them. Well, it's, it's one of the things that we seem to, it's not a surprise to me that kids who uh, struggle to be involved in, in a regular high school setting seem to be really good with their hands. Yeah. 
not trying to characterize in any fashion, just saying that's what I happen to notice about yep. the particular students. And the adults that work at the school have uh, skills in this regard, so they're able to, um, I, I saw some of the projects they were working on when we were able to run it before, and uh, they were really doing some nice things. Steve, are there any other scenarios that we could get them what they need that isn't $60,000? Like, I'm sure you've thought this through, but are there, are there any other options to? Yeah, so we were looking at it from the, like, pay me now or pay me later kind of. So if, if, if we got um, one of the, uh, if we went to like sheds happen and shed happens and stuff like that and said well what what is a, a 14 by 28 shed that allows for and then you got to add a heating some kind of a heater system to it and do some other things to it so it, it was yeah we could do it for cheaper but it doesn't have the flexibility of the space and would we need to to do something later for flexibility so there's there's always the opportunity in this for them i'll give you an example if you said look we'll take thirty thousand of that and leave you thirty thousand that gets them um that gets them an 18 uh yeah 18 by 24 with uh windows double a uh, garage door end on one double opening doors on the other end, that sort of thing. I mean, could they could they make ends meet with that, um, it, which would be an improvement over what they don't have? Yes, they could. For a longer term solution, the, the garage would obviously meet more needs. So Steve, is this, this considered is this something that could be added to the, the referendum for the building? um it couldn't because it's not a permanent structure it would be like like saying let's go to a referendum for a portable um, right so i would i would suggest that we could maybe do this as a two-phase piece where we get the structure up and then the internal stuff maybe looked mm -hmm. at in the next year i don't know but i think there's some flexibility I would love to have them have it, especially for the professional development piece of it. I think that's critical. But um, I feel like if there's a way to be creative that still gets them something quality, I I would I'd love to explore that. All right. What about the programs? Let's, I think in Dover. Now, if we keep half that number in, can we do something with that? Like, is that we can we can uh you can start you know i i think uh here's something i would throw out to andrew and spencer and uh to summer kevin's crew is that that could become the ultimate extended learning opportunity because exactly. those students could build it that's what i was going to suggest yeah. I mean, that would there's, be amazing. There's, there's a house in dover i think that is uh that was built by the high school students or maybe it was the the uh, vocational students but it's right on you know the drag right before the high school it, people are living in it now and it was a student project i can mm -hmm. hear spencer's and andrew's thinking of oh my god steve what did you just get us <laughs> well, is andrew and spencer here that they want to chime in on this yes i'm here yeah 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 i'm you know i'm all for you know we're we're extremely flexible at MHA and, and I do agree with you guys, um, you know, kind of a couple of years ago when we kind of dreamed this up. Um, yeah, I think that would be a wonderful ELO, but I just want to make sure we do it right. And it's something mm -hmm. that lasts in our district for a long time. Yeah. You know, I think Mary Heard Academy is growing very quickly, you know, and as Steve mentioned, you know, our student population benefits from the, the hand tools and the small, small engine work. You know, we have those six old town canoes outside every winter you know it's it's that kind of our outdoor learning equipment you know we need we don't have room for it. we need storage so i'm all for flexibility and happy to take on any project we can do but 
Um, that's that's my spiel, I guess. Okay. Can we cut can you the hear me? hand tools? I'm sorry. We cut the re the replacement hand tools, didn't we? Well, some hand tools are some pretty cheap things, and I bet we could work some deals out with some local places. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So if we go ahead with a thirty thousand dollar cut on that line, are people in agreement with it? Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. I think I think right. that's a reasonable frame we can work with them. I would like to say that let's remember next year that if there's another piece that they need to continue that project, that we could try to keep that on the table. I agree. Oh, that's great. I just yes. want to make sure too that that project is good. Like you said, it, that it's a good quality project because that has to be a, a really nice space for them to work. You know. Mm -hmm. You don't want something put up that's not quite right and stuff. You know, it, it really needs to be a quality piece. So I just want us to always keep that in mind, too. It, it will turn into a bigger cost sink in the long run if we can't do it right in the first place. Right. Yeah. Um, exactly. And I, you know, I think having our students as involved in, as possible in the process is a great idea and certainly a great learning opportunity. We don't really currently have the space where we can use the tools to even build the build the building yeah um so that's just another thing to sort of keep keep in mind yeah. yeah so um we we also have to keep in mind that if i like the idea of if we build it they will come <laughs> like we this is the kind of thing that when you put in a project like that some of these out uh, school systems that want seats in our place or are thinking about it, when they see that kind of thing, that's a seller. Exactly. So what, what can we get with $30,000, though? That's <laughs> my concern. I, um, I think so let's talk to Kevin. Kevin actually has good skills on that. And I think there was uh, one of the comments that you might not have seen, though. Brenda Gagne, I think, just offered up her husband. If you have a base of that 3000 in there, I think there's some things that we can at least um, put in a good start that might need to be flushed out more next year. But thank okay. you. And let's, let's, talk about, let's talk about or look at the cost without a heating system out there first to see what that shaves off. If we can just the building up okay. without, the, without the little accoutrement. <laughs> accoutrement. <laughs> Yeah, I'm feeling very frank here. It's going to be a fancy building. <laughs> I think that's some really wonderful real life experience to give to those kids, and they're going to be very motivated to do it, I believe. I agree. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Reduce travel, professional development. Yeah, so that's, that's transportation doing their part, saying, hey, we're in, we're part of this district. Uh, we're, we're trying to build the, the commonality of experience on what we want our drivers to, how we want them to operate. And we do have Terry Baldoff and we do have Brenda and we have Jeremiah who can also do uh, work with drivers on that. We'd like to send them to like the, the MAPT, Maine Association of Pupil Transportation. Um, summer rodeo and in, in the, uh, the professional developments there but um especially where we're looking to hire new drivers but verinder has said i i can trim a little off mine as well okay i say we cut it I do. thank you all right all right so that is a cut yeah. and much appreciated uh we are oh the textbook budget oh. My thought is like, unless these are really textbooks that aren't needed, I have a hard, that's a big amount to cut for textbooks. Yeah. So I, I don't know what the story is there. If they're, if those are truly, if that's truly a number that they can do without, but. My instinct is let's keep it. I mean, is, Mike, does anybody Mike, have any more information on this? Mike, what is the textbook? Yeah. Is it, a, is it, um, 
is it a particular actual textbook or is it uh, as part of a replacement cycle or is it like textbooks in books? So are you talking classroom libraries and things like that? Mm. Mike Roberts? He's not with us? He's with yeah. us all the time. <laughs> all whole meeting. Yeah. He had to go get a snack. <laughs> he, he looks... Well, maybe we can come back to that one. He's, on, he's muted. Mike, can you unmute your... Your phone. He's I gotta, trying. He said, "Wait." He's trying. He said, Wait. Just give him a minute. <laughs> what? Can we come right back to that one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so, reduced contracted services on the grounds. Knowlton, three thousand. Was that the new um, septic that, or something? No, it was, it was maintenance. The same thing to Knowlton as uh, Audra had done to Huzzy. The, the, the front of the school needs a significant facelift as far as grounds were um, putting in um, putting in raised beds, putting in uh, keystone, whatever it is around there to do some beautification projects. Place is looking a little, if you walk to the front of the school, it, it's not a pretty, compared to, to Huzzy, that's what she was, that's what she was offering. I started a few weeks ago and it isn't pretty. Yeah, but pretty you can you can still learn in an ugly setting. <laughs> <laughs> that or seems like something think, that students could work exactly. on. You know, I think, it, I think one of the things could, that we talked about is the pine trees in that entrance. And I think if we can get rid of those, which should be pretty close to a zero cost, uh, yeah. that yeah. that would help with the aesthetic sum. Um, and I think the rest of it, we can probably have to push off to another year. Why is that a zero cost? I thought it was really expensive to get rid of trees. So uh, the wood. trees, they will take, you can get them and they'll take them for the wood. Okay, I like that idea. Yeah. Is that part of what they wanted to do was get rid of those? Uh, that is part of what we wanted to do. I don't think that that was in that cost though, because no. we were hoping the same thing. The difficulty is getting the um, is getting the stump work done. But we've got a we've got a backhoe and some other equipment that maybe we can get some of that taken care of ourselves. We did a lot of work at the Hanson School and in Lebanon um, one year with a United Way um, School Pride Day, and. We got all the parents and everybody in to help and fix up the school grounds and build things that needed to be built and do the nature trail. So that that's something that's that you that. might be able to do. Could we? Yeah, uh, could we keep a little bit in there, like a thousand dollars in, for them to like get some of the initial projects done? Well, to, to get some of the materials and then find the labor is. It's, right. it's easier to find the labor than it is to find the material. Right. I think so lots I think, of people don't make donations for that. If you go to, you know, local businesses that have materials like mulch or pea stone, I mean, oftentimes they'll donate something. And, and you, you're not going to, I don't think you'll get those stumps pulled for a thousand bucks, though. I mean, that's kind of a pricey thing. Yeah, mm. but I think we can do some of that stumpage with some of our equipment that we have on hand. Unless Mr. Moore is on and says, nope. Well, I think one of the other things that we have to our advantage is if the uh, the shipyard in the past has, when they new, have new boats come in, they usually have groups that'll go out. We could reach out to them to see if we have a boat right now that's assigned to Berwick and they'll, as a community project for that boat, they, they would come to town and do some work as well. Hmm. That's oh, awesome. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Okay. I, I so think there's some avenues here that we can explore a little bit more to get Sorry? some work done there and make it a priority. But I think I think we can get a, rid of the three thousand and then, as a board, yeah. focus on trying to get that done. I agree with you. In other avenues. I agree. All right. So, okay. general consensus: no on the three thousand. Right. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Do we Mike have uh, back if someone wants to talk to Mike? Yeah. 
Hi, Mike. Yeah. Uh, can you explain to us about the uh, the textbooks? Yeah, I just put a comment in there. Uh, I apologize for that. My wife was wondering why I was yelling at the computer. I couldn't find the mic. <laughs> um, that which is that was a first. That was definitely a first. Yeah, it really is. Steve had said that it's just the ongoing quest to get our classrooms with um, full classroom set of libraries. And um, we're getting with yeah. our ELA and social studies. So. Uh, it's amazing. Every set is, um, you know, anywhere from two grand to thirty-five hundred. So it's it's just taking away or adding, depending on how we go on classroom libraries, um, for the most part. I personally would like to keep that in there. I feel I don't remember this specifically, but I feel like last year we cut the same thing. And I, I mean, I could be convinced, but I I'd rather start by keeping keeping that in there. Yeah, I agree. Especially if we've already had, uh, you know, the instructional supplies, which I know that's not textbooks, but it's, yeah. It's a school that needs books. I've been approached by um, a resident who has a lot of young adult literature. And is that something that you could use, Mike? Yeah, uh, we are always reaching out. I think Kristen Hobbs, Elise Galusha does um, does that constantly. Um, so yes, we can always um, even Sue Grabowski in the library. So yes, we could use that probably in um, still um, a good portion of our classrooms, and we have good people that can filter through, um, making sure we knew what was appropriate for you know for us. I don't know anywhere from grade four to grade ten. Um, we would love to look at it. Okay, I'll tell her that. All right. That'd be great. Uh, email, she can email me. I, I know we got a lot of other things going on, but yes, <laughs> it would be worth starting that, which right now would be priority number 164, but we could use it. All right. All right, I will make a note of that. Thank you. But, but otherwise, we are good with keeping that in the budget, the 2,500? Yep. Okay. Uh, all righty. Um, so where are we? Eliminate summer data retreat on our area. Yes. So we, we have people come in that are not on the administrative team. They're uh, reading their literacy coaches or their reading specialists at schools. They're part of the response to intervention teams. And we typically offer them an off on honoraria for the day that they come in in the summer to do work. I think it's $150, so that's for 10 people. And we would just, uh, we've reduced the number of people that we invite to do the work. Mm -hmm. How how important is that work that you're having them do? Well, they're, they're a lot of times they're the key people in your school, like a, a Tina Harding at, at Huzzy, for instance, or a Sue Huff over at um, Lebanon and so forth, Mimi Bean. So Elise Galusha, um, that's, uh, I'm sorry, my screen just decided to turn out. You're still on. Oh, okay. Huh. That's, um, you know, it's something that we have done for probably the last seven years. If we didn't do it as broadly this year, this summer, we would survive without it. Would I rather have those same people at the table? Yes. But if if I'm given choices of things to to change, this would be one of them. <clears throat> okay. So I think the uh, the the eliminate the summer data retreat on our area, which would mean that we just trim down the group, the lacrosse jerseys, um, the uh, high school equipment. What is that specifically? Which thing? The high school equipment. Uh, just Very specific what, number. What yeah. is, yeah. Um, is it microscope? microscope. Um, yeah. The middle school equipment, if, you, if I can speak to that, um, the, the middle school lacrosse programs are in rotation to get new uniforms. I will simply bump that back to fiscal year 22 and we'll tell them to wait another year. It's okay, thank not you. A difficult cut. Yeah, thank and you. then Joe, what, uh, I cannot keep track of what the specific equipment was. 
I Some thought the high school was microscopes and hand tools. Oh, microscopes were part of it, yes. And student desks and chairs. Right. Yeah, because Joe's getting a, another good size class coming in. Oh, that's right. Uh, we did talk with, it was either, was it uh, Mr. Finley, was it NBES or was it another school who said, hey, we've got, Somebody else, or was it the Mr. Middle? Roberts? Michael Roberts himself offered up. Michael Roberts. We are getting him done. He's got some furniture that he can, you know, so we can we can live without that. That is that is true. I just wanted to prove to the group I know how to unclick my microphone. So yes, <laughs> that is true, Joe. Thank you. Um, from the thank you, Michael. Okay, Please. I'm now clicking my microphone back I'm off. I'm very thank impressed. <laughs> and, and I think everybody in the board realizes we're talking about it's a push off cost. It's it yeah. doesn't get done this year, it gets pushed off next year, just like some of these other things. So I think we could do, I think we could, that that cut, we could piecemeal things and be okay. And then the ELL, we've talked about that. We Sue's taken a good dive in to look at what the numbers are there for kids who are on levels one and two that will need two periods of direct instruction a day and the kids who are at three and four that need one period per day, I think we're gonna be okay. And I think that no matter what we do, we're likely gonna be in great line with every other district that we're gonna be out of compliance uh, because there's no magical, magical bus of ELL teachers that are gonna pull into the district. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like Cutting from a full position to a half position takes us out of the running for some teachers, but I'm not sure too many districts in the state are going to land someone anyway. Okay. Are you saying, if I can backtrack a little bit, are you saying in terms of the equipment for the high school that we should cut the whole amount or? I don't think it makes sense to uh, piecemeal that, that one. I think it's take it and we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay. So we're going to cut the you know, summer data, the lacrosse, and the high school equipment. Yep. And also the ELL position from one to half and the uh, that last line we know we can take off. And the ELL from, yeah, from one to a half. I support those. I agree. Yeah, yeah I, agree. I agree. So that... Quick math here. If you look back at your budget sheet, Denise has been doing a great job of keeping up with the quick math. Yes, Denise, excellent. I don't see any to... okay. so, so What I've done is yeah. I have um, kept a tally on the to the right of all the oh, yeah. cuts you've agreed on that total one hundred fifteen thousand nine hundred twenty-five dollars. What that will do to the bottom line is make that a 1.94% increase on expenses and a 5.05% to the taxpayers. All right, so Denise, what would it take to get this under that 5%? Say that again, I'm sorry. What would it take in dollars? to go from 5.05 to 4.99. Yeah. Okay, let yeah. me calculate that. One minute. Good call. I was going to ask the same question. <laughs> I know it's $62.95. <laughs> what do you know? I just think it sounds better if we can keep it under 5. Absolutely. A lot. Okay, that number is $13,000. Huh? All right. So um That still seems like a lot. That's that's a lot, isn't it? Um, again, nineteen. Thirteen five, I think. Did you say? Thirteen thousand dollars. Oh, thirteen thousand. Excuse me. Correct. Can the can the board give us you and I, Steve and Denise, some time to like? We'll find you know, it. Yeah, I think we can well, figure that out. And I, I think, think we're I still it's scraping here and there. I think one thing that we got to keep in mind, we're still in the holding pattern for the insurance. Yeah. We dropped it to a three. 
I would like to think that we'll probably come in under that. So we might save some more there. Uh, we might be shocked and come in over that. But I think three is a good number to stay at. But yeah. we might find out that we still have some wiggle room in our insurance as time goes on. But I thought we didn't find that out until after we had to decide on this. No, uh, April 1st. No, April 1st, you'll know. Okay. And you got to adopt a budget by April 9th. Okay. As long as things stay in line, we should have, we should find that out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, can we get an agreement to let administration find that last 13000 Yes, but also if Travis is right, if for some reason insurance comes back and we have yeah. a little more wiggle room, then Absolutely. maybe we'd have those. But we'd like to come in just under five is I, I think agree. we're all agreeing on. Yeah. Yeah, if we, if we could get that other thirty thousand dollars back in to complete that uh, shop and storage facility at the Herd Academy, yeah, that would that'd be, be big. that'd be big. I would. I agree. Okay. Do we need to vote on anything, or is that sufficient for you? No, that was the workshop part. So now we're out of the workshop, back into the meeting. Right. Superintendent search update. Hello. It's on hold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's Everybody funny. Somebody asked me. Leave. Somebody asked me about that, saying, "Well, you know, given this, wouldn't it be more beneficial?" I said, "You know, <laughs> who in their right <laughs> mind? Who Run in their away. right mind?" <laughs> hey, you're the one that said that you're going to stay till the end of the school year. If the school year doesn't end, <laughs> you can't it leave. <laughs> Or right. maybe he thinks he can leave now. <laughs> and we don't know it. Okay, look, I gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So unfortunately we still have to move forward. Yes. Um Joanne, Estrita, Denise, does anybody else want to just do a quick overview? Sure, I'll do it. Um we had um the the, the interview rounds that gave us our three candidates they have been to the district and toured um we have sue do we have the uh, results of the 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 um input from the communities from the from, from the forum so i don't have it um broken down yet i apologize um we haven't had anything else to do no. i mean <laughs> but jen and i are going to um take the information and kind of sanitize it a little bit because people yep. did ask us not to have their names on it yeah. when they did their emails and stuff. So my hope is that we can do that in the next couple of days and I can send information out to you all with that. Um, the, it, the results were, um, they were, they were good. Like in terms of everybody, I think felt like they could share their thoughts. So that was good. Um, but again, I'll share, I can share everything out hopefully over the next 24 hours okay how about the videos of the presentations that the candidates made i can't find those on the website right that hasn't been so terry was uploading and i sh i just need again to get this stuff up onto the site so i should hopefully have that that's the other piece of this um we should be able to get those up there tomorrow she's already sort of got them all streamed up and now we just need to put them on the website if you search Burke Community Television, you should be able to find it. Yes, they have it there, but I don't have it on our district website. Thank you, Charlie. All right, um, but we do, you know, we do have the feedback. Um, we have the feedback from the the, the more general hiring committee, um, and we're looking to do, unfortunately, video interviews going forward. Um, the, there is a question um, whether we bring all three forward to the board or just two of them. Um, but maybe we need to wait on that until everybody's had a chance to see the results from the community, uh, the impact that these candidates had on them. Yeah. Um, the other piece that I would like to be able to share with you is I was pretty strategic when I set up the visits that day so there were certain um so several of our administrators were able to spend um some alone time with each of the candidates so just to kind of get a feel for things and all that so i'd love 
I'm going to share those results with you too, the thought process behind that, so that you have just feedback from all levels. That sounds great. Thank you. Being trapped in a car with people is an interesting <laughs> way to uh, get to know each other quickly. It is. Um, <laughs> hang on a second here. So, did, um, did we just clearly enough ask the question of the board of whether if we had the option of we had originally said that we our hope was to put three candidates forward if the hiring committee felt like uh <laughs> well that's why we need to have people's input to make that call well I'm afraid. i think okay but i think the question actually was more about the recommendations of the hiring committee um that's it, true I think it, the question really is, is the board okay with the hiring committee putting forward only the candidates that we feel like would be, that we really would get behind? It would be the board's not the community. Was that too vague or did people get what I was? Joanne, what did you say? I, th I think, um, I think what Denise is trying to say is that if there were two candidates that we thought would fit in with our community better, if we could put just two candidates forward, if we thought maybe one wasn't quite um, someone that would fit into our community, would would the board be okay with us only bringing two right. people forward instead yeah. of three candidates? Right. I don't have any problem with that. We can always wait too until you hear the feedback. Um, it, you know, it's just putting it out there so you would know. You, you guys could weigh in on what you thought if we should bring three forward or, or just two. I would love to see the feedback first. I know yeah, I don't I have, that makes sense. I have a stake in, in the. I don't have a dog in the fight, but I think that's the job of the subcommittee. Is I, I agree. Hey, who are the successful candidates? To bring forward so that you're not taking a candidate that you think might not be the best fit right now um, and saying we're going to put you forward in this because that also creates a little hardship on that candidate's situation in their current position so it's, right. it's beneficial for both sides if you so, don't think the person yeah is i guess yeah. My thought is through the hiring committee, we've had a number of different opportunities and different ways to, you know, sort of go through the process and not everything is going to show up on a video or on an exit interview or, I mean, not the exit interview, but like the, you know, the community feedback. The feedback yeah. I think, I guess what, I'm, I think what we're asking is of the board is do you... Are you okay with the, with the hiring committee basically bringing forward only the candidates that we feel like would be a good fit? Which I, I do think that that's our job. So, so you would only have two come to do the interview? Potentially. Yeah. The interview with the board? Yeah. Potentially. Uh, and that's what we put the committee for, is to do that? And if we've had the 18 or how many ever it started out with, and you can whittle it down, then I, I, I mean, that's that's what your the job of that committee is to whittle it down and bring us forward who we think is who you guys think is in the best interest of this district. We're kind exactly. of hemming and hawing because right now, I mean, we initially said that we would bring three forward if we could, and we could, but really there are two that stand out to us. And I don't, I mean, yes, it's our, it's our job as the hiring committee to, to present to you, but we had told you that there were potentially three. And I just want to make sure that, that, you know, you guys would be all right. You would feel um, confident in the job of the committee if we only put forward two. And this committee is not just <laughs> board members. It's the whole community, right? Right. Yeah. Well, let's, let's, let's talk know. about that for a minute. Yeah. yeah, because the community the community folks helped this this board subcommittee cut it down to the three that we brought into the district mm -hmm. and now this is the conversation that's really a board thing and i'll be let me let me just throw something out there 
There's um, this is a little awkward because of all of your administrative team is on here. And so, so that's a thing, but it is what it is. And so I'm just, you know, putting it out there. Um, but anyways, so I think, I think it really, uh, on a personal note, it's okay with me if we bring all three forward, but I do want to want you to listen carefully to your subcommittee when, or if we get to that place where we need to make that decision. Does that make sense? That does. So, I personally don't feel that I have got going to the community night, have enough information maybe at this point to make that decision. And I would really like to hear all three of them by themselves in an interview, but that's just my personal opinion. So I think if we're not going to involve the whole committee to shrink it down to two, we're going to just go off the board. I think we should continue forward with the three and go from there and let, let us yeah. all, and then listen to the committee during the process as we go to whittling these down to one. Because we are going to talk about this in an executive session. I Absolutely. Assume. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Um, the other question we had, well, we, we need to, uh, to establish the interview questions that the board will ask. Um, and they're going to need to be the same questions applied to every candidate, basically. Um, they will have some relation to the questions that were asked by the larger hiring committee, but with more details. More so, are these the questions that Sue just shared with us? Yep. Yep. So I've been sharing, I shared two sets of questions with you. Um, I thought just a few minutes ago. So like, as we've been doing this, I've been doing that. Um, the what I would like for people to do is and I again I don't think we need, want to do this tonight necessarily to cut it all down but I think we need to cut these questions to about like eight to ten at the most because we're talking about an hour's time um, I do think they need and the ones that I sent you are kind of big meaty questions so they're ones that will you know, help you get a good handle on where people are coming from. And we can, we can, uh, we can, if, if you can give some recommendations or just send on the Google doc, just say, Hey, I like that one. I don't love that one. And then, then the, then uh, Astrid and Denise and I and Joanne can sit down and just yep. hone them down to the, to the eight or 10 that we want to do for the, um, the final interviews. Does that sound okay? So I think what I'm, I'm only seeing 11 questions. I'm not seeing. Right, I said, did I share them both? Oh, wait, here comes another one right now. There we go. <laughs> I just sent you the second set. Okay. Um, and again, some of them are similar, but I just, there's language kind of stuff and just trying to make it um, like, I just really want you to take some time and each of you guys just go through and pick the questions that you think are the most important for us to ask. And we'll compile that into the final set. And we're going to be meeting again when the, the subcommittee. We need to, I would say set a virtual meeting um, early next week. Okay. So we if you guys can take the weekend to think it over and get back to us. Thank you. All right. Um, let's see. All right, moving on. Employment. Or do you have any more comments, Sue, or are you good? Only that um, we're looking at trying to do the actual interviews the same date that we set, um, set the budget, which would be April 9th. Right. Um, okay. Employment, new hires, retirement, resignation. None. Yay. None. <laughs> 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 okay other just, just for the record you speak chris russo is working and now the video is on our web page huh. there you go so there our technology you. department is right now yeah they're on fire <laughs> i hope not <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're sitting here um, does anyone have, have travis if he is on fire <laughs> <laughs> Oh, where did it go? Anyone have any other comments? I, I have a building committee question, I think, from Steve. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, how are we doing meetings there? The same way? Yeah, we'll have to do virtual meetings. And uh, there was a there was a virtual today with Kevin, along with Neil Raposa from Civil Consultants, and uh, Alan and Ashley from CHA about the North Berwick Elementary site, just uh, uh, parking lots and things like that to see how things would or wouldn't fit. So other than that. We'll, we'll repost uh, the next building meeting. Okay. Building committee meeting. Okay. I think it's on Tuesday. So. Um. Yeah. Next week. I forget. But sounds yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Anyone else? It'll be real cool. I just have a question. So, if we finalize, when when do we sign the budgets? You know how we all sit together in one big room and we sign like thirty documents. <laughs> yeah. oh, pages in exactly the same order on every one. <laughs> yeah, that that how, yeah. how do we do that? It's the same color pen. So I'm so glad signing. you remember that. I'm sorry. I was just saying I was so proud of them for remembering that. Oh. So that, that you is trained us well. And if I recall correctly, that the so the warrants have to be signed no more than like three days after after an, an approval meet. I got to look back at the schedule to see what that says. Uh, so I'm sorry, I can't. Can't come up with it right off the top of my head. No, see problem. if I can. We we might be able to meet again by then anyway. Yeah. I doubt it. Speaking of meetings, I do have a question for you. Um, should we plan to touch base on the? Uh, should we plan to touch, touch base next Thursday, or do you have other meetings scheduled, like superintendent search things or whatever? We don't. No. Okay. Um, I think we're kind of a little bit of a hold with the budget at a, a 4.99, and we're going to see what the insurance says. So then we can come back to you. So that would be on the um, April 2nd meeting. That's going to be really quick. Hopefully we get the numbers. Not a lot of time for Denise to put that through, but she can give us a ballpark on that for the second maybe and then you got the ninth to uh adopt the budget okay so those right. are the, those are the things i've got firmly in my head and uh i'll check in with you uh, i'll check in with Estrita to see if we have other topics that are necessary got to get to and we'll talk about whether to meet or, or not next week does that sound okay Estrita? yep it does Yep. I'm, I'm um, thinking with everything that's going on, that maybe we should just meet next week just as a quick update of where we're at on our remote yeah, learning and all that stuff. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. You can get Even the budget. Like 10 minutes. Find the rate of change. Uh, Lord knows what it's going to be. Yeah. Okay. Um, I do have an, an, an other item, as I alluded to in my Wait, email. Well, hold on. Do we, are we scheduling a meeting for next Thursday? I think yeah, we should. It's 7 o'clock. Typical. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think and so. I, I may have more information at that time on on if we need an executive session for like a teacher negotiation or anything else too. Okay. So uh, be prepared for uh, next Thursday, I guess. Okay. Um, I had, I don't know if you all got it too, an email from the um, MSBA um, regarding um, okay. A petition to to they they'd like to get as many people to sign as possible, basically to uh, petition the FCC to extend the current E-rate program to more households, given the need for online learning in this moment that we find ourselves in. So I'm going to go ahead and forward you that email if you didn't get it. Um, sign it if you would like. Uh, I just wanted to put that out there that this is an effort that's being made and that it could use the support of board members. And that's all. And I already signed it and only took about 10 seconds. Okay. Did you all get it yourself? I couldn't tell from the email header if it yeah, was. Yeah, I got it. I got okay, it. good. Then I won't yeah. bother forwarding to you. Okay. That's all I have. Um, let's see. Are we doing another public input session? No. Uh, no. We, you have, you have you know, to. It's you, on the agenda. It's on the agenda. Do you have any calls? Yeah. You have to at least ask. 
Yeah, so we'll see Do if we Jen... have any additional public input. The only there are no calls. No calls. Oh. Okay. All right, Sorry, then. Jen? No calls. All right. And under other, I thought I should give some of the partial, because of the sports change, I should give, give some of the partial scores. Noble Knights, six. What? Huh? It's a partial score. It's, oh, never mind. Nice. No. I heard the Go back to your joke all book. teams were undefeated this yes. season so far. <laughs> right? I love that. Yes, that's awesome. Undefeated. All right. Uh, I just so, have. Uh, I, I just oh, have. Oh no, one, my one other I wanted to say. What was that, Travis? I said I just had one other that I wanted to add, and I wanted to just, as a parent and as a school board member, thank our administration and our staff. The amount of stuff that they're doing is ridiculous and it's awesome. Uh, the kids are having fun watching the videos. You know, even though Mr. Conley's joke book was funny and kind of lame, it was still good. And the kids really enjoyed it. It's becoming a nightly event in my household. So, well, will you watch. The been too. You watch for the cat in the hat tomorrow, buddy boy. <laughs> I got, got 2,600 hits on the oh my on goodness. The on the wonky donkey. <laughs> it's a great story. I would I would like to give a shout out to the um, parents. Um, a lot of parents that I've talked to or um, seen on Facebook are putting together schedules so that they have a set aside time for um, uh, for academics and outdoor time and um creativity and, and they're just being so creative about those schedules it's really neat to see and the kids are loving it uh just last thought for me chris chris russo just shared that i'm going viral right now that's about the last thing i want to do <laughs> All right, guys. Can I get a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. This is Nancy. Becky. <laughs> Who's second? It? Becky. Becky. Anyone disapprove? <laughs> we all approve. We all approve. So eight, eight o. Okay. Eight o. Have a good night. Take care. Good night. Everybody be safe. Right. Be well, everybody. Bye. Yes. Bye.